horses that you know can't be touched or perform a function for someone be it light riding competitive breeding whatever the case is you know if they if they can't perform those functions there's there's not a lot of people in the world that can afford first off or have the interest to own horses that they don't do anything with that they're essentially wild unbroke and they just you know pay for them to eat and you know hay hay prices are expensive they're you know horses that don't perform a function they easily easily get into trouble and the ones that are that fearful you know they they end up in in really unfavorable um, positions you know in terms of their life being threatened there's a there's a rather large um slaughter horse slaughter business right and that's that's a part of it too horse that I actually bought seven years ago. She came and she was a little bit damaged and I, I wanted to you know be a horse trainer so I thought I'd take a crack at it. I brought her home. I had purchased her from a, a very kind woman. She was a woman that was trying to help her um, and just you know fell on hard times and, and couldn't yet but she initially had shown um, a lot of a lot of signs that she had been mishandled by people very head shy, very nervous. Uh, she didn't really want to be touched or interacted with uh, by humans at all. It took a lot of uh, groundwork and just spending time with her and early on it was a span of months um, just so I could reliably walk up to her, get close to her, um, interact with her even just on that basic level. Um, and you know over time I got the tack on her, swung a leg over, taught her some stuff under saddle and she was she was always very nervous so everything that you sort of taught her for the first time um, you had to go very slow, you had to be patient with her, let her see it, let her learn it, figure it out and um, eventually eventually she was good enough that I, I could take her to a show so I had started her show career um, in a very low level stuff and just had her doing courses and gotten her around and then I had a couple of um, of students also ride her in some horse shows and that's when I had found Alexis and she had really fallen in love with her at the time and um, and so her parents had had purchased her from me for her 12th birthday. Mm -hmm. Good girl. That was her kiss and then this is her smile. Reserve champion today. So when I first got Diva, I was young, I was 12, and um, so I started showing her show jumping at just the local level um, shows at like a low height. Um, it was her, both hers and I's first show season together. Um, so it was mainly we just did it for practice, just to see where we were at. And then the following year of 2014, I did a whole uh, Trillium, I guess, silver level series um, on her. And we ended up coming second out of all of central Ontario, which was a lot better than I thought we were going to get. It was um, beyond expected. I'm glad that I got a rescue uh, just because she made me work like that much harder and it's just more um, feels more of like an accomplishment when you you know s succeed in like a competition or something because like I would compete against horses that were bred and trained to show and she would beat them being a rescue her first year showing so I just I'm glad that I got a rescue. <laughs> And then for counting, I don't know if she'll do it because I haven't done it in a while, but I'll stand beside her and I'll go like this. 
I always looked at horse training as a little bit of an honorable service to them because you can, if you spend the time, you can provide them with a job that will keep them safe, that will keep them doing something for someone, um, some sort of vocation that will kind of guarantee their life, that someone's going to look after them and take care of them for the rest of their life because of the job that they can perform. It's definitely one of those perfect situations that helped to make me passionate about training and selling horses and that feeling um, it doesn't always go down so so much like a fairy tale like diva was but that that feeling definitely keeps you hungry and keeps you chasing and it makes you want to do it again